fury is unleashed! Hi, Anger. How you doing, buddy? As you can see, our constant companion has returned. <clears throat> Many thanks to you and fortune, friend of the Grummels. But your journey to the Serpent's Spine is not done yet. The Broke-Tooth Horsen stole our rabbit's foot. He was the Grummel with the biggest lucky door. This is very bad fortune indeed. Please, Blood Elf, we need our rabbit's foot back. We need his good fortune back. Can you search the Broke-Tooth Outpost for him? Okay. Ah. <sighs> Well, Narlex, K is secretly the Shaw of Anger, so, I mean, you know, it's kind of, I mean, with the whole Shaw Anger thing, being an Anger Shaw, it just wasn't my thing, is what I'm trying to say. So there's Rabbit Foot. Ah, they took my lucky do. Their leader hose in here, Momo, stole my Rabbit's Foot. This is most bad fortune for Grandma's. My rabbit's foot is a big lucky do for grummels everywhere. If Hosen learned how to get luck from my rabbit's foot, then all is lost. Can, please, can you get it back? Okay. Thank you for the rescue. Meet me at the Burlap Way Station. We're staying muted on sound for just a bit. If you're paying attention to chat, Anger is still yelling wherever he is. Where is he right now? Oh, oh looks like he just died. Okay. Uh, that sounds horrifying, Rory. Whisper it to Deutsch, though, if you want to share a chat. Or a link. Ook and wick, it's not gonna stop the Ravage! We'll talk about the Ravage in a bit, too. The Ravage, near as I can tell, appears to be a thing pretty exclusive to the more wild Hosen. A.K.A. the ones in Kunlai and the ones in the outskirts of the Vale. It's okay, we got an ancient preserved rabbit foot, which reeks of oils, incense and an assortment of animal odors that curl the nose. Whee. <laughs> Many greetings. Oh, I smell my lucky do. Oh, bring it to me, please. Many good fortunes to you. I am Brother Rabbit's Foot. I am a merchant, a traveler, and a big lucky do for grandmas. In times of peace, Valvaxis would do well to buy my wares, but fortune has not met us this day. We have much work to do. Look what Broke Tooth and Knuckle Thumps did to Grummel Way Station. Hardly a lucky do to be found. Grummel's had a deal with the Horsen. We give them food, they don't ravage. Whenever they think to ravage, Shadow Pan remind them not to ravage. But all the Shadow Pan are away defending the wall, and the Horsen want more food than the Grummel's have. <laughs> Many farewells. What's your lucky do? Grummel's named for lucky do that gives most fortune to a specific Grummel. It is most important that Hosen not steal a Grummel's luck. Oh, my lucky do. Oh, happy day of good fortune. Many thanks. Before Grummel's keep Hosen. Before, Grummel's keep Hosen from ravaging by bribing with food, but now Broke Tooth Hosen South have their big magic idols. The Ook of Duke has trained them to use their idols to get power from sacrifices. They are using them to kill Grummel's. He must destroy these idols. For every idol, there is a chief. Kill chief. Throw a corpse on the altar. May your feet find good trails. The broke tooth holes in south of here killed all my grummels. What's worse, their packages are undelivered. Fortune frowns on a grummel pack undelivered. Please, give my grummels peace on the great trail beyond and bring their grummel packs to me. I will see that they are delivered. Farewell, friend of the grummels. Hosen only ravage when they think their supplies are too few for the number of mouths. Problem is, Hosen always have more mouths than food. We have very few grummels these days. It is a hard thing to ask, but you can be can you befriend the grummels and destroy the broke tooth? It is the only way to prevent them from destroying the landscape. Good fortune to our friends. Sorry, Anthony. So a Ravage, he kind of just gave it away, but actually has a really, really easy way to explain what a Ravage is. Anybody ever see Warhammer 40k? A Ravage is basically a wog. In other words, um, if uh, very rarely, and I do mean very rarely, 
There we go. Let the uh, let that eat the holes in there. There we go. Um, <clears throat> uh, every now and again, no, a wog. There's no R, despite the British connotations. A wog. W a a a a a a a a a a a g h. There might be some exclamation points too, um, because every now and again, the Hosen uh, Hosen tribes, and I mean tribes plural, so multiple tribes working together, which by itself is quite unusual for the for the Hosen, will combine together and form a ravage, which again is just them going wag over an area. And the difference, though, is orcs when they go on a wog. They're interested in the fight. They're there for having fighting and winning, right? That's the orc's perspective. Hosen go ravaging when they want to take. It's basically kind of like locusts. And I mean that kind of literally. If you could imagine a swarm of locusts descending upon an area, uh, that... <laughs> lol, Deutsch. That would be... Uh, that would be pretty much the equivalent of what they're doing. Because they're not interested in conquering. They're not trying to take territory. They're not trying to, you know, defeat their enemies or have a good fight or anything like that. They are just interested in consuming resources. All the resources. Again, locusts probably being one of the best examples I can think of for that. So ravages are, I mean, less deadly than wogs, but a little more concerning for an area like Pandaria. Hence why the Grummels and the Shadow Pawn have maintained this balance for years and years and years to ensure that the Hosen do not ravage. The Shadow Pawn uh, maintain a vigil, you know, show of military force every now and again, just to make sure, while at the same time providing defense from over the wall. The Grummels supply food to the ro to Hosen, so they're like, ah, no need to ravage. I'm oh, sorry, that's not a Hosen voice. There no need to ravage. We got good foods. No need to get ooked in the duka. Yeah, locusts. I understand the concept of insects having a purpose in, you know ecosystems, but seriously, uh, locusts can just leave the planet. <laughs> Forever. Um, <clears throat> Look, I don't know about you, Deutsch, but I hate those Mises to pieces. Oh, there's one. Let's get rid of mosquitoes while we're at it. And spiders. And all bugs and insects of any kind whatsoever. We will create a new world. A perfect world! Seriously, though. Screw some of those bugs. Um... Gosh darn it, I need like... Oh, yep, up, oh, up. Oh. So in case you can't quite figure out what, out what we're doing. So these Hosen have been trained in an extremely primitive form of voodoo slash shamanistic magic by someone. We'll see who later. New king, new rules. Sorry, Wicket's gonna get ravaged. Yeah, so the long and the short of this is there's a new king of the Hosen of, in this area who just took over. And I didn't get it, Deutsch, I'm sorry. And that king has been teaching them this extremely primitive form of shamanistic magic where they ritualistically sacrifice souls in order to consume some of their power. Kind of similar to what the trolls do, just like one one hundredth of the effectiveness. And they are ravaging, regardless of rules. Because that's what the new king is ordering. Make sense? You smell of good fortune. The Jib of Duke was a friend of the Grummels. He lasted a whole three seasons. Now the Ook of Duke is in charge and most angry. He thinks food from Grummels will stop soon, so he ravages. 
A confident hosen is a dangerous hosen. Thank you for your help, friend of the Grummels. <laughs> Many farewells. He gives us this first this thing called the Hosen Idol, which we're gonna pop out really quick. It does that. You're welcome. What's your lucky do? Uh, there it is. Grummels are simple people. We are made to explore and deliver. You good fortune for Grummels. When we back at proper camp, I must buy you the smelliest, luckiest incense I can find. While you were gone, I saw a group of Grummels come down from the Burlap Trail. It was led by my brother, Yakshu. But then Knuckle Thumps attack. They took my brother and his Grummels north. Please, Valvaxis, save my brother. He has always had bad fortune and no luck, but he is my brother. Look for him at the altar in the front of Fort Silverback. May your feet find good trails. Farewell, friend of the Grummels. I like the quiet implication of a given individual's worth in Grummel society being directly tied to how... I'll save you! What the ook? Oh, that was close. Uh, their worth in Grummel society being tied directly to how lucky they are. Hence this the phrase, you know, well, he is very unlucky, but he is my brother, you know. Oh, I have just the thing, and, Wanderer. And they say Yakshu's not a lucky do. Many thanks for the rescue. Bros before hoes, and... <clears throat> good fortune for me to be saved by a lucky do like you. And Brother Rabbit's Foot always say I not have good fortune. Bah! The Hosen have a yeti. They call it Old Poot Poot. And they keep it at the back of their cave. Hosen are normally scared of Yeti, but now they feed it grummels. They have a hunter chief, Cho-Cho the Wicked. Uh, can you see if he has key on him to Yeti shackles? Bad fortune for a Hosen if a Yeti loose in their fort. Beware of Yeti! Come, shop, browse! Smell. They took my grummels. Hosen don't eat grummels, but Yeti do. And the Knuckle Thumbs have a Yeti. Please rescue my grummels. Cut them down, or let them out of cages. Rescue them any way you can. Many fortunes and rewards if you do this. Good fortune to all friends of the Grummels. The Knuckle Thump Hosen have a new chief, the Ook of Duke. He sees fear in the west, anger in the south, hatred in the north, Yongles in the east. So he sets Hosen to ravage, gathering food and supplies for coming famine. And there's pretty much his motivation right there. Get another domino being knocked over by the Shaw of Fear and his interactions bound down in the, uh, the Dread Wastes. There are many knuckle thumps and dangerous. Please, Lucky Do, can you defeat their fighters? Farewell, friend of the Grummels. Okay. I will kill many things because you asked me to. Mercenary life is a harsh life. Boop doop boop doo doo doop doo doo. Wait, wait, that's not the right song. <clears throat> I work hard for the money. So hard for the money. Is that better? <laughs> many greetings. I'll save you, Grummels. Ookin' wicked. Get back here. See? You can tell right there I worked so hard for the money. And you thought I was just making a random joke with no relevance whatsoever. <clears throat> Also, I love the level of sophistication amongst the hoes in here. They have mastered the usage of rope and uh, goat taming and uh, and I, I don't know who you're talking about who was impaled other than the hoes in earlier who got eaten by his own uh, device. Oh, I already killed those. Hey, it's hard to tame a goat. A goat bo bit my sister once. Except that's not true, and I don't want you to think I'm lying. I, I was making a money pie, though, Roberts. I know, I know, it was a moose. I will sack myself as soon as possible. 
Ah, yes, that was the rope kind of disintegrating as a thing. Also, in case the metaphorical nature of Pandaria didn't get to you enough, when I carry around a Lucky Do, I can literally use it to actually have a real impact on things. Like earlier, I turned a guy into a pet doll because I had a Lucky Do. Poot Poot belongs to Chocho. Hey there, Poot Poot. It's okay, Poot Poot. I'm here on your side, okay? Okay? I'm not going to call you Poot Poot. That's kind of insulting and derogatory, really, when you think about it. Let me just uh, see if I can figure out where your shackles are. Oh, they're somewhere around there. Oh, there they are. I have to it for a second. There we go. Give in to your anger. Yeah! Oh, yes! Give in to your anger! Hi, Darch. Okay, I gotta admit, that was some pretty good timing. Anger really knows his timing. Well, they have to be maintained, Narlix. So, that pretty much answers Euphoria. Seriously, I can't believe the timing of that. Because that is so appropriate, given what uh, our Yeti friend just did here. Wow. Give it to your anger. Okay! <laughs> God. That would be highlight real moment. <laughs> right there. Rampaging Yeti. Hmm, this gives me a most big idea. <laughs> and you. greetings, friend of the Grummels. You are a true lucky do. May your feet find good trails. Lucky do's and rope. A lucky do would be wise to never travel near a yeti on a dirty yak. Oh wow, that looked like one wild ride. <laughs> May your feet find good trails. <clears throat> Today is a day of many good and bad fortunes. Bad fortunes that Hosen stole my grummels. Good fortune that my blood elf saved my grummels. Bad fortune that so many Hosen had to die to learn lesson. Good fortune that blood elves are lucky doos and know how to fight. Grummels are not fighters. We carry. We explore. We are content. Now that Grummels are rescued, we need to rescue supplies. The Ook of Duke is only chief because he has supplies. Go to the Duker Dome. Yes, the Duker Dome. Uh, northwest of here, take some Grummels with you. Keep them safe. Get them near supply crates. Grummels will know what to do from there. Rabbitsfoot and I will meet you there. Beware of Yeti! <laughs> you smell of good fortune. Your Yeti ride gave me an idea. The Ook of Duke has a pet Yeti he named Chomp Chomp. He uses this Yeti to scare other Hosen into making him leader Hosen. We need to get rid of that Yeti. Get to the Duker Dome, northwest of here, and defeat some of the Cage Masters, so Chomp Chomp not tied up as much. Yakshu and I will meet you there with lots of incense and a dirty yak. Good fortune to our friends. Um, I don't want to know what's going to happen to that yak when we get there. Also, that would be cool if there was a command for that Bregman. I doubt such a thing is even possible. But that would be a neat thing. Yep. Time to go beyond Duker Dome. If you're paying attention, this is the second Thunderdome reference in Warcraft. The other one being in uh, Tanaros, back in Cataclysm. What's your lucky <laughs> Many greetings. Depends on how you do it, Darch. There's no hard and set rules on something like that. There have been plenty of settings where there's been an absolutely important major character who hasn't really had a lot of screen time. In fact, Warcraft has that same thing. Um, if you're paying attention in uh, to two characters who really have not had a lot of screen time, uh, those two characters, of course, being Medivh and Gul'dan, 
one would argue Sargeras has had extremely little screen time. In fact, we didn't really learn about him as a character until the Chronicles book, so that's this year. It depends on how you execute it, though. If you're going to have a character who is informed by other characters, that's difficult to do, but possible. But that's, in my opinion, one of the best ways to accomplish that kind of writing style. Even if the character isn't shown, have us constantly learn new things about the character through other characters, you know, that kind of a thing. Mad Vax beyond Duke. Oh my god, Forger. Really? Forger, we're not friends anymore. I just want you to know that. I forget the story, but there was a story once, I think it was a short story, where, um, oh, we're done with this. Where, uh, we were following the footsteps of some great warrior who had been this great champion to all these people, and it was amazing and incredible. And, um, the, uh, after a bit of time, you know, we just kept following his footsteps and seeing all these incredible things he accomplished. And you probably already see where this is going. Because when we finally met him, he was just some guy who basically lucked out constantly and was kind of pathetic. And ended up dying in a really pathetic way, like falling down a staircase or something like that. But because of his actions, like, the whole nation had shifted its gears into a completely new mindset, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, I have just the thing, Wanderer. Now that Hosen King is going to learn why it's bad fortune to cheat Grummels. Good fortune to all friends of the Grummels. You smell of good fortune. Time to go after the leader, Hosen. <clears throat> the Blizzard really does love their puns, don't they? The time has come to face the Ook of Duke. We beat him, and the Hosen won't have someone telling them to ravage. Here's the plan. Yakshu will lead Tassel to the arena. Scare away Chomp Chomp. Then you sneak in. Fight the Ook of Duke. While his hosen are distracted by the Yeti rampaging through their home. We'll meet you back at Kota Base Camp with big reward. Good luck to you, friend of the Grummels. <laughs> Many farewells. Oh boy. Lucky do. Don't fail me now. Uh, is that a yak? with s fireworks on its back? Fear the monkey. Slip and die, Duker. Slip and die. It takes a quite a, a quite a man to be able to uh, use banana peels as their primary uh, means of attack. But he's dead, so we're okay. Hmm. I don't know, Darch. I'd have to think about that one. I think that would be a very case-by-case -case situation. Uh, greetings, friend of the Grummels. The Oak of the Duke is dead? Hooray! Farewell, friend of the Grummels. The burlap trail is safe. What's your lucky do? This here's Hosen lands. Very dangerous. But Grummels must trek through. Supplies must reach the Serpent Shrine. Go protect the next wave of Grummels on their trek to Kota Base Camp. Okay. Good fortune to our friends. Okay. Oh my god. I'm coming to save you. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yes, Anger is currently dead. My fingers are ready to immediately mute the game the moment he's resurrected again. So there's only two who survived that attack. This is what I meant by how easy it is for these guys to die. They start in a pack of six. Uh, so far, it's good ever since I got my fix in charge. So, one of the problems I had with the new hard drive is it's one of those ones that's designed to automatically power it down to be more green. 
which is immensely irritating and, and actively disruptive. And it got to the point where certain sectors were being perceived as bad because it kept wind, uh, winding down, right? So, um, the solution was a custom program, which I didn't write. So, you know, someone else wrote, obviously. Because uh, I don't know Jack for writing my own stuff. And, um, and this program actually, every minute, writes to a text file on the drives to keep them spinning. And then in another minute, it'll go... And then in another minute, it'll go... <sighs> Otherwise, it's been good, though. Before you ask, yes, I know there is a way to change that setting so that the green drives don't spin down. However, you have to set a very specific interval uh, rating on that, which, which the one you want to set is dependent on what kind of uh, setup it's in, what array it's in, the drive itself the processor speed, and a bunch of other variables that I didn't figure, feel like actually dealing with, so I didn't. Not when I could literally just set up a script, basically, to say, hey, make sure the drive's still there. Make sure the drive's still there. You know, every minute. What? I didn't get credit for that. Hang on. We must do the escort again. We must save the Grummels. The Grummels are very important. Ah, we will save the next group of Grummels. It's okay, they have pretty regular trips, as you might imagine, since this is basically the equivalent of freight. I mean, how often do you see a semi moving on the highway, huh? The correct answer is all the time. Many See you around, Darker. It's okay, we will escort this crew for the Horde! And for the Alliance. Truly, the greatest Alliance of all is the Horde. And, ironically, the greatest horde of all is the Alliance. So, I don't know what to make of all of that. Oh, no, you don't. Not this time. Dremel power! Also, I only played Champions Online a bit because... And I mean no offense to anybody who liked it, but I really didn't like Champions all Online. Right. Oh, you... hey, he's back. Um, so, I only played Champions Online a bit, but I have to agree, their pun storming was a little bit severe. I like a good pun, but damn. I also like puns you don't really notice at first. Like the Lederhosen. I honestly didn't notice that the first time I played this. We made it! We made it! Give me credit, give me credit, give me credit. Credit for the quest, or I'll kill all of you. There we go. <laughs> Give me credit for escorting you, or I'll kill you. Him. You smell of good fortune. Ah, hero of the Grummels. Welcome to Kota Base Camp. Enjoy good fortune for most happy Grummel delivery. May your feet find good trails. Lol, Dark Monster. I can't say anything. There are a couple of Pokemon games where I did nothing but casino for days and days and days. Because I was going for something specific. I've done that in Dragon Quest, too. Kota Peak, famous for kaffa bushes. No other can survive at this civilization's elevation. Grummels make very good living selling kaffa kota blend, but it's very dangerous now. Thanks to my cousin here. He's got the wildlife up there hooked on Kaffa with his scheming. Kaffa Kota is more scarce than ever, with goots gobbling up all the yetis hoarding it in their caves. I pay you good for any berries you bring down. Here, take a sample. They see for yourself the power of Kaffa. <clears throat> Kaffa equals coffee, by the way. Lots of yetis up Kota, yep. 
Usually not too dangerous. Usually just eat goots. Then they ate goots full of kaffa. Now they're moody, cranky, sleep a lot, never seem rested. Typical kaffa addicts. I must up. Bad. It's hard work cutting seeds out of kaffa berries, but I noticed goots eat berries up and give back seeds in about a day or so. I fed everything I had to the goots on Kota Peak, and now they're nuts, charging everything that moves. Kota, not used to uh, not used to be safe for grumbles to gather kaffa. Not anymore. Not with them goots. Will you help? Yes and no, Rory. It was genius. Kaffa berries go in goot, seeds come out. Kaffa kota is already rare and worth a fortune, but my invention, kaffa goot, is gourmet. That's making fun of that one particular band, brand of coffee in real life, if you're not aware of it. But it's all over now. Uncle is upset. Peak is a mess. All that's left is collect the rest of the kaffa goot and never make it again. I won't ask her you to gather it. Kind of a mussy task. Not fit for hero. Just mark it so I can find it easily when the mountain is safe again. So, uh, as an aside, this is the quest that me and several viewers have referenced a few times, where rather than us actually picking up the stool from the goats in this case, we're just marking it because, ah, oh, that's not a task for a hero like you. Which I found amusing. So, they have uh, a, a debuff called uh, Kaffa Crazed. They go between uh, sudden birth. Basically, they get Kaffa Rush, which increases their attack speed and their move speed. Lasts about 10 seconds or so. Or maybe it's 12 seconds. It doesn't last long. Shortly they have to, after have, they have the Kaffa Rush, they go into Kaffa Crash, which reduces their attack speed and move speed by quite a bit. It's just a nice little tidbit that I enjoy. Oh, hey, Hylisk. What's up, dude? Everyone say thank you to Hylisk for his in innumerable aids to the lore run so far. Many gratitudes. Much gratitude. Much wow. But yes, this is the uh, <clears throat> poo quest that uh, does not involve us actually picking it up for once. This quest also kind of sucks to do without a flying mount, as I should say. Oh, speed watch! I should give my opinion on that, because people were discussing it earlier. And I don't have too much to talk about right now. So, flying in WoW. Now, first of all, let me make this absolutely 100% bluntly clear. I really, really, really like flying in WoW. I absolutely adore flying in WoW. For me, it adds to the feeling of exploration. It adds to the feeling of enjoyment. It makes me feel like I can go wherever I want without having to be irritated. It makes it so that I feel like I have ascended more. I know that sounds weird, but it's a great way to have progression in a, in a non-mechanical, in a non-gameplay format. And it's very useful. As has been pointed out, and Blizzard has actually complained about this in the past, as has been pointed out, it's a great way to cherry-pick your questing experience. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for going through and doing everything the hard way. Sometimes I am in the mood for doing it, going through and ever, doing everything the hard way. Sometimes I feel like making a brand new character and going through and just enjoying the quests with no heirloom items and no nothing. And sometimes I feel like getting to 60. You know what I mean? So I absolutely enjoy the flying in WoW. I will also point out that a lot of the people who complain about the flying in WoW make no sense to me. Let me, let me make my statement a little more clear. I have heard now, basically during the lore run, people giving legitimate complaints, legitimate grievances against flying. But one thing I have never really heard anyone uh, analyze the fact... <laughs> lol, okay. Is the fact that the flying is 100% optional except for a few very small areas. There's very few parts in this game where you need flying. Let's actually enumerate them. In order to do the all of Storm Peaks, you need flying. In order to do all of Ice Crown, you need flying. In order to get to the throne of Kill Jaden, unless you're doing Kill Danis dailies, you need flying. In order to get to the flying zone, Skitties, or the flying zone up here, Ogrilla, you need flying. So that's four. So far. 
Um, I don't believe anywhere in Pandaria. No, I'm wrong. There are a couple of places you can only explore in Pandaria that are flying. For example, there's quests up here. Uh, there's an area, it's, oh, hang on. Right around here, which is actually up in the mountains, you can only get to with flying. There's a couple of spots like that. And none of, uh, none of Draenor requires flying. Literally none of it. Um, so I will, so I will acquiesce, there are places that require flying. But I still feel that that qualifies as an optional thing. Not because of the required thing, but because there are so few things that require it. So, in other... Really, Hylas? Oh, that's right, you mentioned that to me. I still don't see how that's possible. Um, my point overall is the fact that... Oh, by the way, I do know Wolf Among Us is based on a comic series. Sorry, I didn't respond to you, Rory. I responded mentally. I keep doing that. Um, yeah. Anyways. Um, so, it, to me, I don't see why people have such an aggravation against flying when... Except for very rare circumstances in the entire game, the massive depth and breadth of WoW, it is not mandatory. You don't have to get a flying mount. You could get a regular mount and travel around on flight paths if you feel like it, you know? They don't really change quest design based on flying, except for the areas where flying is mandatory. Like Ogrilla, like Skeddies, like the uh, the areas around um, Storm Peaks, and like the chunk of... Uh, like the chunk of uh, Ice Crown that I just mentioned. But I do not wish to derogatory to speak derogatorily of anyone's opinion. I know there are people who have legitimate grievances with flying, and that's fine. Believe it or not, that's actually not what I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about right now is the way they've implemented flying thus far. So let's look at this, okay? So BC added flying. And initially, you hit 70, and you get a really, really terrible, terrible mount. I mean, you do. You, you, I've shown it off to you, kind of the equivalent, but it was it was a 60% mount. It was basically the same speed as the current level 20 mount, except in the air, so it was, like, crawling. Um, you had to do a bunch of quests or get a bunch of gold. It was 5,000 gold, I want to say. Um, or you could get, like, one of the, the good flying mounts in order to get epic flying, right? Now, I liked that. It worked because it basically meant you didn't have flying while you were going through BC, but when you hit max level, then you could do, then you would have flying, and flying helped a lot in some of the zones. You could really tell Netherstorm, for example, was a zone that was kind of designed with flying in mind. Um, Wrath. You have to go through the, you know, through the quest, hit 80, get to the point where you're ready to go, and then you get... Um, the cold weather flying. So you already have an epic flyer, or a flyer as the case may be, but then you dump the money on that and you actually have the ability to fly in Northrend now. You have unlocked the ability to fly Northrend. I say hitting 80 first because um, usually you would hit 80 before you finished the zones. In fact, you were kind of designed to, uh, especially since, as I mentioned, the two end game zones both were designed with flying in mind. Both uh, And Storm Peaks also gave you a rental ma flying mount if, for whatever reason, you didn't have one at that point. So they basically had it said, here, we're not going to lock this content away from you. Here you go. Cataclysm. Well, Cataclysm did it a little bit differently because of the nature of Cata just being Azeroth, uh, again, you know, Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms. So they basically put that behind a gold wall again. You have to pay for the ability to fly in the old world. And most people just did that initially. Pandaria, you have to get 90, or, yes, you have to get to level 90. Um, and then once you're at level 90, you could go ahead and get the Cloud Serpent Riding, which enables you to fly out here in Pandaria. Warlords, they decided to just kind of abstractly get rid of flying. They didn't design any of Warlords with flying in mind. Now, let's go ahead and discuss that for a moment, because that's really what I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit here. So, if I'm not making my opinion clear, the idea of... Ooh, Trillium. Check it out. Shaw Minerals. It's literally light and dark essence combined into one. That's what Trillium is. There's light Trillium and dark Trillium, and then you forge it into one. Anyways, uh, I don't remember... I, I thought the 77 was the book thing, or this, the actual training before the book was implemented was 80, I thought. But I, I could be wrong. Um, so I will not speak further on a matter I don't know exactly. In Warlords, 
the let, let's go let's go and discuss one of the big reasons why they went ahead and didn't have uh, flying designed at all. It's because they had a lot of jumping puzzles and a lot of attempt to encourage exploration in Warlords. I find this hilarious because one of the biggest complaints that is frequently levied at Warlords is the fact that it is such an insular exploration or, or expansion that everyone just sits in the garrison, right? And it's funny to me because they did a lot in Warlords that we'll be talking about more when we get there to encourage you to get out and actually do stuff, funnily enough. Um, but in but from their perspective, if they designed it with flying in mind, they would have to change the design of that. There's so many jumping puzzles, especially in the spires of Arak, that would be completely you know nullified in their difficulty when you if you had uh, flying. Similarly, there was something like that in Nagrand as well. Several things like that, where you have to get the glider and then glide your way to a very specific point until you land, and then once you actually make the landing, you know then you could get whatever it is you actually need. Um, to be 100% honest with you, I didn't even finish all of those until I finally got a flying mount out in Warlords, because some of those were really hard for me. Uh, that's not a complaint, it's just a statement of amusement. <sighs> so, I will say, though, that I don't agree with their reasoning. Now, I know, now, let me explain what I mean by this. They seemed... So, when Blizzard came out and said, no flying in Warlords... Their big excuse was that flying would reduce the quality of questing and exploration. Now, whether that's a valid point or not, it's invalid in this application. Because remember, the path all the way up to since flying was first introduced, all the way in BC, was you go through the expansion first, then you earn flying, right? That has been the path in everything, with the exception of Cataclysm, excuse me, I should say. So, other than vanilla, which didn't have flying, and Cataclysm which was kind of a weird situation, you had to do the content first, at least a chunk of it. Then you got flying. You earned it, in other words, if I was to use such terminology. So, the problem was Blizzard kept reacting as though people were upset that they didn't get flying initially in Warlords. And yet, I never heard anyone complain about that. Nobody I heard said, oh, we want to start Warlords with flying. They all said, we want to be able to fly in Warlords, like we have the previous expansions. We want to get through the game and then earn flying. And in fact, when they finally added their compromise, I knew several people, including me and my friend Pax, who spoke positively of the compromise because the compromise is you get to the end and you do an achievement and the achievement gives you flying. Bam. They even gave you a mount for it too, which was a nice bonus. Um... I will discuss that achievement more when we get there, because I feel like they went a little overboard with it, but we'll get to that. Point being, it was such a weird stance for them to take. So, let me just go ahead and make my opinion clear. I, yeah, as Narlix just said, I'm fine with no flying at launch. I have never demanded flying at launch. But if you're going to restrict flying from endgame, that's a step backwards. And that is something you really, really should not do in general when it comes to an entertainment industry, in my opinion. You do not have a buffet table and then suddenly say, we're not serving rice anymore. You know, the fried rice has been removed from our buffet table. And people are going to be like, well, why? Well, we feel like the fried rice was taken away from the dumpling section. You know, that is, I know that sounds like a weird analogy, but that is effectively what Blizzard's argument was. They took away some of their content to this game. And they said they were doing so because they felt like that content was was removing some of the other enjoyment of the content. And again, as Norlix just pointed out, as I just pointed out, we were all okay with no flying at launch. We were okay with earning it. Hell, it's one, the moment they patched it in so you could go through the, that achievement, one of the first things I did was sat down and started figuring out how to go through it and started working on getting that achievement. I don't mind earning the earning flying. In fact, I even like how they implemented it in one aspect because the way it works is once you've gotten the achievement on any character, you have it on every character. And I like that because that, feel, that feels like what they did back in Wrath, for example. Uh, in Wrath, you could get the book and toss it at someone so that the moment they hit 70, they can fly, so they can fly all the way through Northrend rather than having to fly at 77, right? And that's kind of what the equivalent is here. Once you get flying in Warlords, all your characters can fly in Warlords. So, uh, I usually stream about 11 a.m. EST to whenever I'm done in the evening, Kaizen. Uh, admittedly, I haven't been I have been streaming half days the last, like, four days. But that's my normal stream schedule. 
So, um, oh, thank you, Deutsch. Um, train of thought. I, I guess I've already really made my point here. I like the fact that you have to earn it first, but then you don't have to earn it again. I like that. I like the fact that you don't have to... Uh, I need to fix that. I like the fact that you don't have to go through the whole process over and over and over and over. And I like the fact that you have to earn it the first time. Does that make sense? And yeah, it, it, just to make my point here, granted, I am probably a bit biased on this because I love flying. When I, as I pointed out, some people think I am absolutely crazy. For those of you who know what this means, I had epic flying, fly, epic, epic flying mounts on multiple characters in BC. I was basically perpetually poor in BC because of that. Because I insisted on it. Because, gosh darn it, I love flying and I wanted it on all of my characters. And I had... Hang on, let me think about that. I had Zanej, I had Noxaith, I had Zalona, I had Zalosh, I had... Nether. I think that's it. So I had five characters with epic flying mounts in BC. I feel like I'm actually missing someone on that list. I am, my paladin. So, six characters with epic flying. Uh, my paladin at the time was actually named Sindragosa, no joke. Um, so, yeah, hi Darkrai. Sorry, just setting up something. It's been bothering me that the links are, like, wrong, so I'm fixing that, like, right now. This would not take me too long. Yeah, that one. Well, they're not wrong, they're just incomplete. There we go. I like that better. Okay, so. And yeah, I think water mounts would be awesome if they did more ocean stuff. All I gotta say to that is I loved the, uh, the, uh, the sea dragon, or the seahorse mount in Vashir. I thought it was awesome. I mean, I'm with that. It's effectively the same mechanic as a flying mount anyways. Okay. Also, technically we do have submarines, but I get what you mean, and yeah, I'd, I'd be down with that. So, a fair trade. Please, great Kotakon, forgive Grummel. Let me go. I'll bring lots of coffee right away. I promise. No. Kota Khan wants more kaffa, but I already fed her all I have. Then I tried giving her a nice bow. You can see it right there. She's got a big pink bow. But she's not satisfied. The terrified Grummel gulps and leans into a whisper. I think she can smell the kaffa I drank for breakfast. You brought kaffa? Oh, you magnificent lucky do. Hurry, give it to her. Maybe she won't have us both for a stack. Look, pretty girl. Nice blood elf girl. Brings coffee treats for you. Nom, 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 coffee. I think it's working. No, I don't, Darkrai. Unfortunately. Ah! No, let us go! Oh, God! This is our second Yeti ride. Like, in the last several minutes. Wow, that's a lot of Shaw Essence down there. I hope we don't have to do anything down there. That'd be terrifying. Whoa, God! This is kind of terrifying. Ugh. Uh, okay. We're... We're alive! Yay! Thank you, friend. Let this be a good lesson to you. Never feed the goots. Great. I'll get up there and... 
harvest them soon. He begins wrapping long strips of linen around his hands. Can't believe I thought this was a good idea. You made it! Yetis are tough enough on their own. Can't imagine what a cranky coffee addict Yeti must be like. You brave, or lucky, or dumb. Maybe all three. Okay, well, she's not eating anybody. That's a good start. She must want more coffee, but we gotta give her something to do with all that extra energy. I got it! The burlap trail! She can smash the hosen out there! What do you think, pretty girl? You wanna smash hosen? I think so. Here, feed her my emergency flask of coffee. She like you. Okay. Uh, if I don't reach it by next Friday, I'm doing something wrong, Darkrai. If everything goes according to plan, let's see. I would say next Wednesday, but RL might get in the way of that. We'll see. Yes, I am on a giant yeti. The Terror of Kota Peak. This one's kind of hard to do. You can't be all willy-nilly on it. But they give you a heal ability and a little bit of uh, flexibility in your mobility. As you can see. Oh god, I can't even zoom in more. Behold! You can see that speck on her back? That's us. <laughs> Yeah, let's go eat some hosen. Yes, really. That's how we heal. We eat hosen. Don't think about it too much. Why would I want to do that, Rory? This is awesome. Yes. Yes. Kill everything. Just think of this guy as Thog. Actually, I have to admit, this is kind of what I picture when I think of a rampaging Tusker right here. Agreed, Arthas. I have never had complaints about Blizzard's musical choices. Even if I don't like the song in particular, it's always appropriate. Yeah, that right there, that's a Tusker boat right there. If you ever wonder how they're bringing down airships, now you know. Yeah, I have a feeling Thog's going to be really upset when he finally unleashes himself in just a few minutes. When you guys find out that Sethos isn't actually there. That's true, Hylisk. You're right. I take it back. Womp. 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 In fairness, I think that... I, I still would say that song is okay. It just, as you just pointed out, needs to be looped longer. If it was, like, part of just one section of a longer song, it'd be fine. But instead, it's just... Blomp, 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 blomp. God, I hated that. All right. Normally I'd fly back, but honestly, I got the best mount around. So let's just ride this back. These things are pretty impressive. This is like riding a Gron. Can you imagine the martial capacity of any force that could actually do this to Gron? Like multiple Gron? That'd be incredible, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Wow, that was violent. Not sure what I was expecting. 
Thanks to you, I think we may have just formed a mutually beneficial relationship with the terror of Kodaki Peak. Yay. And then there's a daily to go do it again. We're not going to do that. We're going to go help the Shadow Paw. And yes, Bregwin, I can't see any of your messages, especially the one you just sent. I am, however, not evil, despite what you think. I have to admit, I want a Gron mount. Not a Gron Ling mount. I have one of those. I want a Gron mount. Because, damn it. Gron are awesome. I've always had a thing for Grons. But the only Gron mounts are Gron Lings, like this guy right here. I mean, this is okay, but... Uh, see you around, Dark Ray. Hang on, hang on. Goodbye, Dark Ray. There you go. Just for you, buddy. Yes, all my hair just fell out. Just randomly. It took like an hour to shave it all off, too. Bandaria conceives <sighs> a great darkness. We've already lost the town. Why have no reinforcements arrived from the monastery? Who are you? Can you fight? We need your help. The wall must stand. I love how quickly that progresses. Who are you? Wait, can you help? I sent for reinforcements from the Shadow Pod Mercenary, er, Monastery, but have heard nothing back. We have already lost the town. If only Myron would show up, then we would be saved. A few lucky villagers may have survived Myron's wrath, but we are pinned down here with Myron. I'll stop. We do not have the time to entertain strangers. If you can fight, help my men. If you not, leave, for you will not survive here. Watch the shadows. Our true enemies are the Shah, not the Yongle. The Shah are a motion manifest. Yes, I, we've kind of encountered the Shah a few times by now. But dis undisciplined, uh, destructive, but undisciplined. Undisciplined force cannot last. The flood in dispersion loses its force. The wildfire burns its food. And discipline and wisdom can turn their destructive energy against themselves. Bring me the essences of them. I will explain further. Beware the western wind. And beware the western wind for some reason. We're not sure why. You can see here the Yongle are actually completely black and white at this point. My wrath flows freely. Hmm. If you want to, Hylisk, I would not say no. I had another plan in mind, but mine was going to be rather circuitous to make it work. So, except you're probably not hearing. Uh... Hang on, I'm gonna go get the flight path really quick, for that reason. There we go. Back down. We must defeat the Shaw. I just realized that I'm still not sure which of the Shaw these are. Mm hmm. Goodbye. I know that sounds weird, but again, ang well, so we're pretty sure these are not anger. Pretty sure. But they could be violence or hatred equally. Yeah, if you have flying. It's almost like I have flying in this game. One comment I have heard that I have never heard substantiated. So, I, I like I said, I have heard people now who have given legitimate grievances against flying and WoW. So... You know, credit where credit is due. Some people came up with an argument for that. What I have never heard substantiated is the comment that flying ruined WoW. And I've heard that comment before. I've heard that comment that if, if only because of flying, WoW is, is, is a worse game for it, has, has been ruined by it. I'm not really sure what I think of that. Especially since I obviously disagree. I am 
pretty much on the exact opposite end of that scale, given how much I absolutely love flying in this game. Oh, Snaw, I'm sorry, but I haven't actually watched it yet. I know it's out. I've been asked about it before, but I haven't actually watched it yet. Welcome. I can't believe you made it here. I don't know how much longer I could have stayed hidden. I'm sure there are others. Paladin, we have to rescue him. Then we could go to the Shadow Pond fallback. The master there will know what to do. I don't think so, Nicholas. no. Farewell. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. She's rescued. <laughs> High anger. Well, yeah. <laughs> I a Part of the reason I mentioned that was to see if any of my viewers could come up with reasoning behind the it was ruined, you know, flying ruined, wow, comments. I've heard those many times. Now... Let's go ahead and be honest with ourselves here. As Hylus points out, many people have said, blah, 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 has ruined... Uh, fly, uh, has ruined flying. <laughs> has ruined WoW. I mean, gosh, so many people have ascribed so many things to ruining WoW. I've heard people say that the thing that ruined WoW was the fact that the Alliance could make shamans. I've heard some people say that the thing that ruined WoW was the fact that they went away from 40 mans, and, and so forth and so on. I'm not going to list the whole list. It's, I've heard it for basically everything at this point. So maybe I shouldn't just give any credits to that, but I thought I'd at least offer it for people you to... You are most uh, welcome. Give me, uh, you know, some kind of uh, perspective on that, you know. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Yaw Firebow illustrious leader of this formerly magnificent hamlet. Clearly, you are an upstanding citizen of the world. I wonder if I could trouble you to help me out of this rather sticky situation. I am certain that the Shadow Pond at the nearby retreat will be more than happy to recompense you for any inconvenience. Spoken like a true politician. Family, friends... Your response to him is literally, that's enough. Let's go. There will be a few extra gold for you if you can personally guarantee my safety. Yeah, I could do that. So, tell you what, Sna, how long are you going to be on tonight? Because I don't, I'm, I'm kind of in, I want to finish the WoW Loran before I, I follow it. I want to finish Kun Lai before it gets too late. But if you're still on when I finish Kun Lai, I'll, I'll shut off the recording and then I'll go ahead and watch it live, you know, with you, basically. You are most welcome. This is no place for a bright young lady such as yourself. Maybe you'd like to, oh, maybe you'd like me to escort you to safety. Yeah, why don't you escort me out of here? Spirits, bless your path. You're working with the Shadow Pond? I can't believe it. Speak up. Oh, thank the heavens. I think this I thought the secrets of the Firebow Stout would die with me. Help me out of here for Enough it. of that. I'm not leaving these behind. These are my family's legacy. That is one of the legitimate grievances I have heard. Uh, am I supposed to say Tut or Toot? I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to get your name right. I'm not making fun. I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, so I've heard that, but I, I, I've never heard someone who says that say it's ruined. Wow. Because, you know, I've never heard anyone give any legitimate reason for it. Ruining. Wow. Uh, do I believe believable storytelling over realistic? Yes, absolutely. Be I don't like realistic storytelling at all. In fact, I hate it. It is very much not my thing, and I can't think of any uh, realistic story off the top of my head that I actually like. Um, I prefer believability. In fact, I actually really, really, really like believability. Uh, Self-consistency, continuity, um, that kind of thing is, is my game. But not realistic. Two very different things. <laughs> he was trying to look tough, I think, Rory. Got it. Toot. I'll try to keep that in the future. We must not falter. Have you harvested their essence? 
Good. Now you will see how to defeat unbridled rage. I will craft these into a trap for Kobai, leader of the Yongle. Though he will be snared and we will defeat him, he is not our ultimate target. We serve so others do not have to. You have brought us some time to breathe. We must not despair. Instead, we must act. Beware the western wind. We didn't know there were any survivors out there. Thank you for bringing them to safety. Watch the shadows. Simply killing Kobai will accomplish nothing. He is possessed by a particularly malevolent force. You will, you will use the trap I have fashioned from the blinding rage essences brought, and you brought me. Lure him into the trap, steal his mask. Once you put it on, the malevolent fury will appear and will attempt to take control of you. Defeat him! We will have made a victory of this tragic situation. The wall must stand. I... That's not what I would want, Snaw, but that's probably as good as we're going to get, if that answers you. Super blood. You don't like super blood? Does anyone like super blood? No, no one likes super blood. Not even Kay, who would say he likes it literally just to be contrary. Malevolent fury, blood, 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 death, and destruction. Um, I have no idea, Nikolas. I'd suggest looking up on some forums or something. Uh, well, let's see. Thriller ends the war between the Horde and the Alliance. It brought us Anduin Raytheon as characters. It expanded upon Jane of Proudmoore's character and Varian's character. Turned them both into the characters they are now. Um, we got to learn more about the Titans and the nature of the threat we're facing. And I think that's about it. Other than obviously the, obviously the setup for Warlords, which I was not counting. Oh, I am. I absolutely am, Snow. I just... I'm really hesitant, you know. We are the sword in the shadows. I should feel shame at the loss of our village. I should feel pride in your success. I should feel many things, but must not allow myself to. Until our struggle with the Shah is complete when we finish the expansion, we must maintain total control of our emotions. The battle against the Shah is eternal, until we beat them. We cannot leave this place, but I am troubled by the absence of reinforcements from the monastery, given that we were sent from them days ago. You have performed admirably. Perhaps you could travel to Winter's Blossom, our base camp in the Shadow Pond Monastery. Speak with Lin Silent Strike. He should know what is happening. Oh my god, I just now got a we response. Serve so others do not okay, so for those of you not aware, about, what, like two weeks ago, I tried to implement a new Twitch chat bot so we could set up in-chat polling again. And I found a bot and got it working, and the polls didn't work. Every other command worked, but polling didn't work. Just now, I mean literally just now, they just responded to my in inquiry. I don't even know what the response is yet. I gotta pull it up. But they did at least. There it is. God, I've got so many tabs open right now. So let's see what they said in response. Uh, really? Okay, hang on. I'm gonna go ahead and respond to this guy right now in the hopes that he's actually watching his own damn thread. Give me a moment. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Ah. Twitch, uh, yes, Twitch is owned by Amazon, that is correct. Last I checked, anyways. There it is. Sorry guys, give me just a moment. I would very much like to get this bot working. I won't be too long.
There we go. Post reply. We'll see if he responds soon. That'd be kind of neat. I would like to get that system working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, Darch? Like, in what in what service, I guess, is what I'm asking. For what purpose? Tell me what you mean, man. We are the watchers on the wall. Oh, yeah, one other thing I like about flying mounts, I probably would not be agree have agreed to do this lore run if flying mounts didn't exist. <laughs> Shadow Pawn Master Chong sent you. Hmm? Yes, we have received his request for reinforcements. We are in no position to grant it. We've just concluded a battle of our own, and the monastery's re reinforcements have been locked up tight. We can't even get reinforcements here, and we're just down the hill. If Shadow Master Chong trusted you, maybe you could help us. The Yongul are our enemies. Still, we must prove we are better than they. We will show them honor in death. As after most battles, the carrion birds have begun gathering. Thin their numbers so the bodies of our foes will not be desecrated. They have gathered at the battlefield to the west. Watch the shadows. Do you seek my counsel? When we regrouped after their initial attack, we numbered three less. You can fight, and must we must plan our defense. If you would help us, grant our fallen comrades their last rites, and recover their armor. You will find the bodies in the west near the gate, and try to keep the birds off them. Goodbye. What is it? Uh, Theramor is, is before Pandaria proper, yes. We are after Theramor. I am sure many of our associates will be requesting your services after your victory here, but I have received a request from the quite some far away, so now. that gets to wait, basically. Uh, yes, Darsh Monster, Twitch can and does shut down a channel for certain reasons. Although their reasons tend to be kind of lax, basically nudity or you know shirt bearing, which is now against the TOS, uh, trying to stream a game that they don't allow, and that's kind of it. Are the things that would get you your channel shut down? Why are you trying to get my channel shut down, Dirch? <laughs> you can be honest with me about it. It's okay. I'll just have to kill you. Or wait. Um. <clears throat> So I hope you guys have been paying attention because there's an undercurrent thread that's been going throughout this zone and arguably the previous zones as well. I, I don't want to give it away too much, but all I want to say is that it's debatable at which point things started going badly. Basically, Nikolas, there is an automatic free upgrade to Windows 10. And if you don't set it properly, it will automatically do that update. You have to basically say no, no really, no ever, and then it won't happen. Which is what I did, obviously, because I have no interest in Windows 10. I'm not bashing it. <laughs> okay? I just have no interest in Windows 10. By the way, I hope you appreciate what this is. This is a bunch of corpses. Look at all these dead Yongle here. This is how committed the Yongle were to uh, pushing through the wall and getting out of the town long steps. Remember how I mentioned earlier that any loss for the Yongle was devastating and how they had an entire culture built up around not killing each other because of that? Think about that when you see these giant piles of corpses. I have no interest or purpose in 7, Lord of Terror. Or, uh, 10, excuse me, 10. 10 is the kind of story, or story, wow. 10, uh, first of all, I don't like 10's interface at all. It would, it can be converted into something I would actually enjoy, but the mere fact that it is not already something I enjoy and I would just have to spend time and money um, converting it to something I like is a negative. 
The next thing that is a negative about it for me is the fact that it adds no new functionality that I care about. In fact, I would go so far as to say it adds no new functionality, period. So I'd be starting over and completely recustomizing a UI for no reason. I would be doing it just because, basically. There is no benefit, no positive, to switching to 10. For me, specifically. Hello. There's also the fact that not every program I use is, is supported My by 10. Flows freely. Yeah, what he said, basically. I will see to it. The armor is returned to their pupils. <laughs> Told you, half man. Be well. Uh, does everything count, Lord of Terror? And I don't want to sound derogatory, but I am being serious about this. I literally do not like anything about Windows 10's interface. It's too... non-utility. It's too flash without enough substance. It's so difficult. And again, I know you can customize it to make it more utility, more substance. But it's still just, it's like, okay, I have to go through this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. To get to something where here I have to hit this. And then that, and I'm there. Literally, two button, click, and that's all it takes. So again, I'm not. I really. Tr I'm not trying to sound derogatory. It's just it's coffee. You know, I, I don't like it. It's like showing me a picture of. Um, I'm trying to think of that one painter, the guy who painted the scream. I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Anyways, that painting. I don't like that painting. I'm not saying it's a bad painting. <laughs> I'm just saying that I don't like it. You know, does that make sense? That's why I came up with that whole coffee thing. We are the sword in the shadows. After what they have done, I would not show the Yongle kindness in life. But neither will I allow their bodies to be eaten by the birds. Oh, they're attacking again. Archers on the wall! I need you to get up there. My wife, Suna, was sent to scout the wall with that fool Lao Chen. Perhaps if he had spent more time preparing defenses and less time spending building that ridiculous ale lift contraption. It matters not. Get a kite from Len to the west, and get up there and find my wife. She'll know what to do next. We serve so others do not have to. We are the watchers on the wall. Munch? 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 Munch. I don't know what that means. Up, 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 pull up, pull up! There we go. We should attack. Ah, oh, that was uh, quite a good bit of kite, fl kite flying there. Good job in getting up here and not dying. It's good you're here, too. Lao Chen's got an idea he's working out. But in the meantime, we've got Yong Gol to deal with. The Yong Gol on the wall here are providing covering fire to the ones below. I don't know what Lao Chen is thinking. But I want you to deal with these archers. The good news is, up here we've got the spirit of the ox helping us. When they're weakened, the ox spirit will stun them, and you can use it to knock them off the wall. We must crush these invaders and hurl them from the wall! Well, what's on your mind? I have an idea, and I am prepared to make a terrible sacrifice. As much as I know that we need my stout brew to fortify our defenders, for the long-term security of the Ox Gate. It's too painful to discuss details right now, but please! While you're up here defending the wall, gather the barrels of oil they're using to light their arrows. We will need them. See you. Anyways, point being, the guy who painted the scream, however you pronounce his name, I, I don't like the painting. But again, that's not... So many people... I've talked about this so often in my show. There's a reason I came up with the entire term, coffee, to describe this concept. So many people assume that if you say, I don't like something, it means this thing is stupid, or this thing is bad, or this thing is a negative. Wherein, what I'm actually saying is, I don't like this thing. Now, in the interest of fairness and, uh, you know, in the interest of fairness and understanding, I do know that most people, when they say, I don't like this thing, are actually saying it is bad. But that is not what I am saying. Warcrafty means of the variety of Warcraft, I guess. And yes, Kay, I secretly invented coffee in order to get you all addicted. And 
I don't know. I'm not doing this quest properly because it's actually kind of hard to at my level. What I'm trying to do is kick them off the wall. Throw it on the ground. How would I market MOP to the masses? That... Let me explain one of the things they did best with Pandaria's storyline. That allows you to kick Yongle off walls to their deaths. There you go, there's your marketing. No, seriously though for a moment. One of the things they did best with the storyline of Pandari, in my opinion, is it starts off very, you know, lighthearted and simple and silly, and it just kind of gets more serious the further you get into it. But we're at Kun Lai. We are three zones away from the end. And we're already at the point now where we're dealing with things like genocide and extinction and war, and we're starting to see some of the darker sides of Pandaria. That zone right over there, that's our next zone. We'll be doing this tomorrow. The Town Long Steps. That zone we will be seeing just how bad bad can get, because we'll finally go to the other side of the wall, this wall we're staring at right here. Shortly thereafter, we will do the Dread Wastes, which is as bad as bad can get, or at least we think that until things get even worse. My point is, Pandaria is a very large bait-and-switch storyline, and I like that about it. I like that it sets you up for being this light-hearted break expansion, and it isn't. It's very heavy on lore, very heavy on character development, very heavy on development of the setting. We learned a lot of the stuff about the Titans kind of came from this expansion. And we know that this is the expansion where they finally decided to start codifying the lore because stuff in Chronicles, direct the book where they codified the lore, directly references stuff here in Pandaria. So this is the first moment at which they really had sat down and said, we're going to solidify the lore of Warcraft. So... The, so, the, my point is, marketing that to the mass, the only way to do that is to give it away. Is to say, here's a lighthearted expansion that will then get dark. And I hate that kind of marketing. So, I, I, I decline to answer. Let other more soulless people market that. <laughs> Got something to show me? Because the only thing I think, to, in the fairness to the storyline of this thing, to preserve the art, excuse me, of the story, is to actually go ahead and say... Here is, we have discovered this ancient realm, an emphasis on exploration, emphasis on a new realm to discover and explore and learn, and this whole new people and whole new cultures, and learn about the Mogu, and learn about the Pandara, and learn about the Hosen, and learn about the Jinyu, and learn about the Saurok, and learn about the Grummels, and the four August Celestials guiding them all. And, and, you know, that kind of a thing. I am 33 years old. And having all of that kind of thing so that when you go, uh, when you're marketed to Pandaria, you're basically viewing it as a break expansion. And maybe I have a couple of hints about how saying things like, for example, you know, may, you know and, and we might be bringing, you know, we'll be bringing our war to this shore, you know, that kind of a thing. Kind of a hint as to what to come, but don't actually just flat out and say, but then things will get dark and horrible. Just don't don't give it all away in the trailer. God damn it. <sighs> mm -hmm. Two parts oil to one part brew. No, it will need more oil. More oil? Really? Oh, whatever. Hello, friend. I could see them flying. Good work. All right. Thanks to you, we have the wall under control. Good job. I'll stay up here for a little while longer. Make sure no more Yongo get up on the wall. You, though, should get down and see what Lao Chin has cooked up. I hate to say it, but maybe he has a good idea after all. Farewell. Words will not end this war. Yeah, I know, Narlux, and that actually irritated the snot out of me. They did that in Warlords and then changed their minds, and I hated it there too. I'm glad that so far they have not announced who the final boss of Legion is. I don't like it when they do that. I don't like them saying, you know, here's BC, you'll be fighting Illidan. Here's Wrath, you'll be fighting the Lich King. Here's Cataclysm, you'll be fighting Deathwing. Here's Pandaria, you'll be fighting Garrosh. Here's Warlords, you'll be fighting Grom. First of all, I don't like that because A, it kind of locks them in creatively. B, it kind of gives stuff away, especially if they're trying to do, you know, this kind of an arc in the story time. And C, that's actually been wrong a couple of times. Uh, C, B, C, and uh, Warlords for a good example of that. So I wish they wouldn't do that. 
And I am glad that they haven't done that. To my knowledge, I haven't seen anything about this for Legion. If they have done that for Legion, please don't tell me. I don't want to know. Yeah? Good to see you made it back up in one piece. Thanks to your help with the barrels, I've managed to brew up a good surprise for our young old friends. When I trained as a brewmaster, I didn't expect to use my knowledge like this. Did you know beer catches fire when lit? Well, the Yongo oil mixed in, it's downright explosive. I have mixed oil in these kegs. Roll them at the Yongo and ignite them when you get close. It'll take a few seconds for the keg to blow, but when it does, well, let's just say I wouldn't want to be over there. Which is why I'll be over here, mourning the loss of the bro. See you. This is it. All our training has been for this. Set fire to it, and... Boom! I agree with you, Hylisk. As much as I think that is narrow-minded and stupid, that does not make it any less true. This is a fun quest, by the way. We're literally rolling barrels of explosive death down here. I don't know, I think by the end of Pandaria we could have put up a fight to Chen. Oh, right, I need to do this. I thought I saw one down here. Uh, oh, there it is. I'm just stupid. And yeah, I agree with what uh, Magister said. In some of the cases, it was pretty obvious who the last boss was going to be. I mean, seriously. Wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm were both really, really obvious. Even though Deathwing was more of a front man than the actual uh, a proponent enemy in, in Cataclysm. I always try to answer questions. I'm, I'm not trying to convince people. I'm just trying to answer questions here. Huh? Sometimes my oh, viewers hi. convince me. Ooh, that was an explosion. Several, in fact. Sad my beer had to go, but at least we're safe for now. And dozens and dozens of Yongle are dead. Good news for everyone. Mm-hmm. We've heard back from Suna on the wall. Something's going on. Looks like they're preparing for their final push. It's time to finish this friend. See you. Oh yeah, the dwarves <laughs> would look at this like, why? I really do like the music in Pandaria a lot. <laughs> the Yongo warlord shows his face. Come, let's finish this. <sighs> That is correct, Arthas. Although that was a mistake, as I talked about before. That was part of the Ilzheimer's problem. Because they thought Illidan was Kil'jaeden. Some of the developers thought Illidan was Kil'jaeden. So they were... They basically always intended Kil'jaeden to be the last boss. They just kind of forgot who Kil'jaeden was. Down you go. I have a plan. Well, their lieutenant is dead. I think we have pushed them out of Kunlai, but at what cost? So many dead. Lin captured? I will not allow Taran Zhu to continue to ignore his charge. Goodbye. This is Lao simply... Jin, we have won the day. Why are you weeping? All those barrels. Some of my finest brew. At least it went out in a blaze of glory. Wait. Where's Lin? I, I thought he was with you. Nope. Where is my husband? He must have pursued the fleeing Yongle while we intercepted their leader. I'm going ahead. I will see you on the other side. I hope. Patience, Suna. If we march into town long alone, we compound our problems. 
We must focus on the monastery and get reinforcements. Yeah, that's not happening. This has simply gone on too far. I cannot abandon, ignore our abandonment any longer. After what's happened here and all you've been through in Firebow, we must travel to the monastery. Whatever they are doing in there can wait. I can take my balloon up the mountain. Be well. Uh, hi, Lisk, you about ready? Here, I'll just do this here. Uh, that one, I guess? How do I... There we go. We meet again. Goodbye. I saw it, Permius. I saw it. Stomp. I usually associate that with Blade of all characters more than anyone else. Yeah, so... Well, we'll talk about it when we get there. We'll talk about it when we get there. It is best to be prepared. Up we go. I find it amusing we As take... As a stranger to no, these whatever. lands, you may not be familiar with the Shadow Pan. Our charge is an ancient one, dating back to the time of Shao Hao our founder and the last emperor of Pandaria. Dark energies embrace this land. Anger, hatred, fear, doubt. These negative emotions can manifest in physical form. We call this dark energy Shaw. Yes, we know. It is our sacred duty to monitor and imprison the Shaw, to defeat it wherever it darkens the hearts of our people. In all my years, I have never seen the Shah so active as when your soldiers landed on our shores. You're Andaria welcome. Andaria does not have a standing army. We, the Shadowpan, are its first and only line of defense. Taran Zhu leads the Shadowpan as his father did before him, but he has elected to close our monastery gates. Why? We must find out. Without the Shadow Pan, Pandaria will surely be engulfed in darkness. Hello. Here we are now. And you know why we cannot let our brothers sit idly by. Be well. I simply refuse to believe the guards will not grant us entry. To the purpose, uh, to the a little bit to the monastery. Should we impress upon them the seriousness of our situation, friends, go east to the sentinel in front of the monastery and demand admittance. I will come with you. Goodbye. Hopefully, I'm inviting the right person there. Excuse me, Shadow Pond Monastery Guard. Look at this. They're just turning away the grumbles. They're turning oh. away supplies and trade. Why would they do that? Oh, oh, hang on, I don't want to interact with that other player. Hashtag other player. What's your lucky do? Beware of Yeti! So... Oh my goodness. Ugh. Well, I'll talk about it in a moment. I need to talk to Hylist real quick. Um... Is the other player done yet? Hashtag of the players. I would probably make a gr playable Grummel. In the brand new class they just added to the game with the Grummel expansion called Merchant. Now, now you make fun, but actually there are several game uh, mechanics and systems which have actually made use of a Merchant type gameplay. And it's actually a lot of fun usually when they implement it. So I would totally play a Grummel Merchant. What is it? I am here with Ban Berhart, and we demand an audience with Terran Zul. 
Beware the western demand? wind. Demand? You demand? Who are you to make demands of the Shadow Pan? Is he attacking me? You're attacking me. Do you seek my counsel? No. This is worse than I could have possibly imagined. The monastery itself has been compromised. This is unspeakable. If the monastery has truly been taken over by the Shah, we will need a great effort to purge the monks inside of corruption. Let's do Be it! Well. That great effort I is called Hylisk! inside the monastery. That would be awesome, Narlik. So, this is a dungeon. As you can see, once again, pen in Pandaria, dungeons are an integral part of the story, just like they were in you know, most of the other expansions. Not Warlords, but whatever. Hopefully it'll be back in Legion. Um, one of the things that I really love about this one, and some people hate about it, but I really like this. So if you've been paying attention, we have had a... So obviously the whole thread of Pandaria is one cohesive story arc, right? Yes, I did. Well, I did it in Corel, but yes, Ryan, and thank you. Um, so this is all one cohesive arc, but these three zones are pretty much one story arc. Just like these three zones are pretty much one story arc. Jade Forest leading to Valley and Krasarang, which culminates in that op awesome epic quest at the Wall, right? Well, here, Kun Lai starts off this story arc, and it weaves through the dungeon, and then goes through the... Uh, there's actually another dungeon here uh, that it goes through, and continues through the Town Log Steps, and then culminates in the Dread Waste. And we're actually supposed to be doing the raid, story-wise, pretty much after this one. But I love this. So, okay, I, I just want to talk about this real quick, because I love this because it's literally quests, dungeon, quests, dungeon, quests, raid. That's one story arc throughout this whole these three zones. Um, and some people dislike that, because that means they have to go and do the dungeon. That means they have to do the dungeon at the right time, you know, in order to be able to get the full experience of the story and whatnot. Because you can usually queue for dungeons or go to dungeons before you actually have the quests for them, you know, that kind of stuff. Um... But I, I I like this better because it makes the dungeons feel more important and it adds to the story focus of dungeons. And it's a good way to really push uh, bigger changes with regards to story. You can do more in a dungeon uh, in terms of big impact story-wise, than you can, and this is true for a raid as well, than you can just in overworld quests. At least that's my opinion because overworld quests, big impact stories, usually require extensive layering. And as we've already talked about, the more layering you have, the more unstable the servers get. So you don't want to do too much layering, right? So anyways, I just wanted to talk about that before we go in. Uh, we meet again. You have come, good. This is a calamitous situation. Goodbye. Our lord, Taran Zhu, is here. Be and well. we'll go deal with him. So... Oh, hang on, no, not warlords. Mists, mists. Let's go ahead and read the thingy. War has spread across Pandaria, and the destructive conflict between the Horde and the Alliance has led to turmoil in the majestic Shadowpawn Monastery. There, three malevolent entities, the Shah of Violence, Hatred and anger have erupted from their prison. Although anger fled the secluded monastery completely, the remaining two have begun wreaking havoc on the site's brave Shadow Pond defenders. So, um, uh, onwards. Brothers, dispose of these insolent outsiders. What brothers? You're all by yourself. What are you talking about? Oh, God. Stealthy monks. Stealthy monks. Ah! Hey, Bowman. What's up? I responded to your email, by the way. I don't know if you caught that already. But, um, hi. Welcome back. And the train is here, just as Bowman shows up. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> um, the Shadow Pan need no outside aid. Remove these interlopers. I like the aesthetics of this place quite a lot. Ooh, this actually hurts. First of all, lots of kegs of beer, of course. It's a monastery. It's the monastery for the Shadow Pond. There's kind of a nice feel to this place. Old, but not in a bad way, you know? And I like the... I have been streaming all day, Bowman. And, they, and they've got these awesome pillars going on. And they've got this awesome uh, mural of the White Tiger. It's really cool, the way they did this. Uh, so that guy up there, we'll talk about him really quick. That is Goo Cloudstrike. Before the escape of the Shaw, 
Glue Cloud Strike was entrusted with training the elite Shadow Pawn spellcasters. Now this formerly gentle and reserved Pandaren revels in unleashing his astounding powers with devastating consequences. He has asserted control over the mystical Azure Serpent, and his students are helpless in the wake of Cloud Strike's lethal attacks. Huzzah! Weaklings! Let me make room for our guests! Yep. <laughs> Approach! Your death awaits! I also love the overall aesthetic of this place in general. Winter, you know, Northern Mountain Winter Monastery of Awesome. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, so this guy is literally someone who just killed his own uh, students. Basically just to show off his own power. Personally, I think this guy in particular is influenced by violence. Uh, we'll talk more about violence in just a bit. Let me show you... My power! Come to me, serpent! Together, we will destroy these intruders! So there's the serpent. He is bound to his uh, control. Notice them just kind of... Serpent, charge me with your power! Notice they're kind of showing off what will eventually become the rather thunder-heavy themed the raid. The energy is strong. Later on. No, no, do not fail me. Well, he's a dungeon boss, and he's also infused with the power of the serpent, so I guess those are your two answers, Deutsch. Also, he really likes beer. Like, really likes beer. And yes, that was clearly the Thunder King. No, um... <laughs> so, violence is by far the least impacting of the various Shaw. He is a dungeon boss, and he has had an impact across Kun Lai, and uh, the Yongol in general. Oh jeez, the archers. We drove back the Shah. Your kind will fall before us as well. Nope. Notice we don't kill these ones. We actually don't kill a decent amount of the Shadow Pawn. We try to save basically all of them that we can as we stampede through here. Um... I used to be really good at dodging these. Damn it. I knew I, I knew if I said that I'd I'd fail at one. <sighs> uh, to do. Welcome, outsider. Master Snowdrift is waiting for you inside the school. Please remember to show the proper respect to the master. I like this, by the way, because it helps to emphasize that not every single Pandaren is completely uh, consumed by the Shaw. That n not all of them are corrupted or possessed. That some of them were able to resist, even while so close to that proximity. Because some of them would simply have the mental and emotional fortitude to do so. So these are actually, you know, Pandaren who are basically completely on our side. And they are... Uh, our next boss... Well, this is funny. This is Snowdrift. Master Snowdrift. He recognizes that the battles between the Horde and the Alliance have contributed to the monastery's dire states. Heroes seeking the wary Pandaren's loyalty must first best his students. Only those who prevail can face Snowdrift himself, a paragon of martial arts who has dedicated his life to attaining perfection of body and mind. So we will not actually be killing anyone here. This is a prove-your-worth kind of a you, situation. You have allowed the Shah to reawaken after all these years. You're welcome. If you truly wish to undo what your kind have wrought upon our land, you must first prove yourselves here in our school. First, you will face our initiates. There's an achievement to bow to one of these after you defeat them. I've already done that, of course. I 
shake my head at you, Deutsch. I like that better the other way. Tokyo Snow, Driftmaster. Where one falls, you are bested our most junior of students. Now you will face two of my most senior. Hey, Lilix. What's up? You gonna come out and fight me? Flying Snow! Fragrant Lotus, step forward. Everyone thinks you were saying you were going to school, Deutsch, because of your phrasing. You have bested my prize students. Perhaps you can be of use to us after all. As my master once said, you cannot truly know someone until you fight them. Come forward so that we may be properly introduced. Such a wasted line in Matrix 3, I want to say. They could have done so much with that. Or maybe it was two. Um, would I say MLP adds more monk lore than Wrath? Uh, yes, I think that's a fair assessment. <clears throat> So again, this is not a fight to the death. This is a fight to learn about the person fight. This is actually Very a fun well fight, then, though. Outsiders. Let us see your true strength. Although when I used to LFG this, I would see tons of people die to that attack right there. Because people wouldn't get out of it. Because they were silly and stupid. Skill with a weapon is but a physical manifestation of one's martial strength. Let me show you what spiritual power is. And he starts throwing chi shots all over the place. Like I said, fun fight. When I was but a cub, I could scarcely throw a punch. But after years of training, I can do so much more. Well, show me. Boom! Nice lariat. Oh, I'm gonna die. Bip, 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 bip. You have proven yourself in battle. Still, if you would aid us further, I must ask something else of you. The Shah of violence awaits beyond within the sealed chambers. Destroy it if you would earn my respect. So we're going after violence. As I said, violence is one of the least affecting, least impacting, weakest of the Shah. He is merely a dungeon boss, although in fairness uh, other Shah have been you know, that small as well. He also has almost no presence other than here in Kun Lai. In interest of fairness, though, uh, it is ver violence, hatred, and anger are so similar to each other that it's debatable how much influence of violence had across the Kun Lai uh, summit region. It is very possible that virtually all of the problems we've been having with the Yongle was as a, as a direct result of violence, not anger and not hatred. We do know one thing, though. So, anger is the big, obvious, blah, one. I already mentioned that and talked about it. Ow, that hurts. I would like school if I learned anything there. I'm sorry, that sounds really arrogant. <laughs> I just went to bad schools, is, is what I, I mean by that. Anyway, so, anger was big and obvious and overt and just, blah, you know, not, not, nothing subtle, nothing intricate, nothing really worthy of note about it at all. Um... It, other than the fact that it was, it was the Zaraki Kenpachi of the Shah. How's that sound? There, that's a good way to put that. There we go. I actually need to heal for like the first time in forever. Um, violence is similarly very influencing and very easy for it to influence things, especially the Yongle and the Shadow Pawn. Most of these Shadow Pawn are actually under the influence of 
violence specifically, not hatred and not anger. So violence probably has the most overall influence on the military forces in this region. But violence is so easily defeated, and I mean, that makes a degree of sense. So it is logical when you think about it, for what we are actually about to see happen, happen. In other words, of those three, it is hatred that's actually in charge. Hatred is actually the strongest in lore. Even though anger probably has more raw power to push out, hatred, hatred is the one who um, is, is, pulling, is calling the shots, has a long-term plan, has manipulations and, and cunning and whatnot. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Also, I do think there was a missed opportunity here. It's not like they don't know how to make a healing boss. They did that. So making some kind of a healing boss or, a, or something like that with the Shah of Violence was a bit of a missed opportunity. I will not be caged again. The Shadow Pan could not stop me. Neither shall you. Well, there's a couple... Th I, I don't have any concrete facts to declare that the that the Primes are dead for good. Other than the fact that everything so far has indicated that once a Prime is defeated, it goes back where it comes from, and we do know for a fact... Oh, no, okay, Grievers are much worse than this. Um, we do know for a 100% fact that Yasharaj is so dead. So long as violence lurks in your hearts, I... And there's the quote Magister was just mentioning. But anyway, so we know that the Primes uh, go away when they're defeated. And we know that they have never shown themselves again after we defeat them. Yes, I was, Arthas. Very much so, actually. I loved the ending. I'm very much looking forward to more of the, uh, the Nova stuff. So we know they haven't been seen since they were defeated. And it is implied that since they all come from the heart, they might return to the heart. And we know the heart is permanently, no really, 100% dead. And with the heart dead, Yasharaj is erased. Not just dead, because Yasharaj was already dead. Yasharaj is now erased. These are the only facts I have to give to you, Magister, for my reasoning behind why I think the Shah are gone and staying gone. So... But now we have to deal with something much worse. Reading! Bloodthirsty, ruthless, savage. The Shah of Violence is unfettered with the Shadow Pond Monastery, feeding on the Horde and Alliance's brutality. The entity gleefully ravages the monks who struggle to impede the monstrous onslaught. The heart of Yasharaj, Rory. It's a physical thing. We'll actually be seeing it later. So, this is actually a really neat little mechanic. Um, I'm just going to walk up here and show it. So you see this? That... Okay, so I'm going to stop for a moment. Hopefully Hyla will. Ah, he's got this. Uh, so you see how all of these things are actually bits and pieces of hatred. These are not actually the spirits of monks. Any more... Whoa, shoot. I should probably go do this real quick. Any more than they are shock. Gosh darn it, stop yanking me. Uh, these are, in fact, fragments of actual emotion manifest regardless of the Shaw. If that makes any sense. They are all coming from a, one source. A slain Shadow Pond Defender. This is kind of insidious and screwed up when you think about it with regards to... Uh, when you think about it with regards to hatred. This is what hatred can do. Hatred will kill you and then use your corpse to pull out aspects of hatred, which, by the way, are invincible. I don't know if you noticed that, but even Hylisk over there, who is a level 100 in raid gear, could not kill these level, what are these? Uh, level 88 no nobodies because they are literally invincible until you purify the host. Once you purify the host, they just kind of dissipate. And so, yeah, you see the hateful essence there. You see the residual hatred. You see the fragments of hatred. And you see, uh, oh, there it is, the vestige of hatred are all the different uh, purposes of them. You see all those? And they are all coming, and I'll try and get a good camera angle of it, from that guy right there. They're all being ripped out of his soul, basically. 
So yes, I, I like that comparison. It's kind of like a, a perfected lich that is all based on that original phylactery. Now this does mean uh, it does mean that they're a little limited in their their uh, it, it does it does mean they're a little bit limited in what they can do uh, because they're limited to, to you know to a small area. But it also means that it, all you have to do is kill one person, one person, and do this ritual on them in order to uh, in order to to have like what is effectively an invincible army. And that's just insidious. And I like that because once again, and this is true for doubt, this is true for despair, this is true for anger, and this is true for violence. Every and so now hatred as well. Every Shaw we've seen so far, they have been showing through gameplay mechanics that inform the lore, that in a way also uh, add to the lore. It's, it's the gameplay story integration thing that I love so much. And here, you can see this much more clearly as Hylisk has given us a shot here. There's the literal tethers to the, uh, to the fragments of hatred over there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's go ahead and purify this. And what we're doing when we're purifying these is effectively removing that link to them. So now, while these fragments still exist, they have nothing sustaining them. Again, to use the Lich parallel, they have lost their phylactery, so now they are just as destructible as anything else is. We can actually skip this pack. You can actually skip a lot of trash in this dungeon. So, this is the big reveal. And I admit, this really caught me when I saw this. Taranzu and the Shadow Pan are mine. Come forward and die by my hand, as all who oppose me shall in the days to come. In case you can't figure that out, that's Terran Zoo. Terran Zoo is currently the host for hatred. Not a hatred, not a Shaw of hatred, the Shaw of hatred, the Hatred Prime is currently housed within Taran Zoo. And all of the sudden, so much of his presence and appearances throughout the story thus far make perfect sense, don't they? All of his ranting and raging against us, all of his uh, self-defeating dribble, all of his violent, hateful, one might even say, uh, con contestions that we should not be allowed into the veil, that we should be banished forever from these people, that we are worse than everyone else present, etc., etc. Everything he's been doing thus far, if you really pay attention to both the voice actor and the word, uh, the word choice, everything he has said thus far has a different tone to it versus afterwards. We're actually going to redeem. I'll go ahead and give this away. We're going to redeem Taranzu. We're not going to kill him here. And no. hatred will leave him and go off, and then we will actually join Terran Zoo if throughout most of the next zone, the Town Long Steps, in order to go after Hatred, and that will segue into the next story arc uh, rather smoothly. So my point being, um, we will see Terran Zoo act completely differently from this point on. He'll still be, have rough edges around him, but you will start to see more of the person and less of the, for lack of a better way to put it, Hatred. Now, there is one thing that's debatable, and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Um, basically, we don't know when Taran Zoo became a host for Hatred. It could have happened at many points in time. It is my opinion that, I mean, it is absolutely undeniable that at this point in time he's possessed by Hatred, because he's right there possessed by Hatred. It is also undeniable that before we came to this monastery at all, he was possessed. Because the reason things got so bad at the fallback... And up here, at the front gate near Winter's Blossom, is because he refused to send reinforcements because he was already possessed by hatred. So by the end of the Kunlai story arc, over here, the, the western half, he is already possessed by hatred. And that is absolute fact. What we do not know is how further back it went before he was possessed. In my opinion, I could make a very strong case for him having been possessed prior to us reaching Kunlai at all prior to us going to the Temple of the White Tiger when we encounter him there and he rants about how we shouldn't be allowed into the veil. I think he was possessed before that. Some people argue, and I love I love this idea, but I'm not sure, I can't, there's not really a lot of evidence one way or the other, that he has been possessed by hatred since this part, since we first encountered him in the Jade Forest. 
I don't know if that's true or not. And that's a lot more debatable. And the timeline gets a little tight there. There would be a very, very brief window for Hatred to get free and then him to come to the Jade Forest. So, possible? It also depends on exactly when the various Primes got free. Because we don't know the answer to that. We know exactly when Doubt got free because we saw it happen at the Jade Serpent's uh, statue. But we don't know when Fear got free. We don't know when... Uh, Anger, violence, and hatred got free, and we don't know when despair got free. So we don't know. We don't actually know uh, when they when they were emerged. We know exactly when pride gets free too, because we're also there to witness that one. Um, but uh, I'm really hopeful that whenever Chronicles hits like volume three or whatever, we'll get a little more cohesive a timeline of when exactly the Shaw came came out to be. Because yeah, <laughs> so. With that all said, the Shah of Hatred has tainted Taran Zhu, the Shadow Pond's pragmatic and mighty leader. Once devoted to protecting his beloved home, Zhu now burns with seething hatred for all life, twisting his perception of everything and everyone around me. Oh, we're, we're pretty close now at this point. Hatred will consume and conquer all! Note that that's not even Taran Zhu's voice. That is Hatred's voice. So Hatred has a great mechanic. While you're fighting him, your hatred slowly increases. All of his attacks, and I mean all of them, when they do damage to you, increase your hatred. He has one attack that just plain makes you at full hatred. Now, full hatred is actually great. You know what full hatred does? I'll, I'll go ahead and let myself increase here, just so I could show it off. This is a great mechanic, and I love it, because again, gameplay and story integration. I'm just going to go ahead and... There we go. Haze of Hate. Chance to hit... Reduced by 90%. Healing done. Reduced by 25%. Physical damage increased by 20%. In other words, just like real hatred will blind us, we literally have a 10% chance to hit. And we do less healing, but we will hit harder when we do it. I love that. Now, of course, they give you a mechanic to purify yourself of hatred. It's a great, it's a great story gameplay integration. There's a lot of gameplay story integration in Pandaria. And so we'll be seeing more of it, especially the raids in the future. Uh, I, I even noticed when I was re-recording a lot of the raids, some stuff I'd missed before. I was like, oh, that's really cool, you know. So we defeat him. Again, do not kill Taran Zhu. No! No! So there's Hatred. And hatred escapes. And we'll be seeing more of him. The Shah of Hatred has fled my body. And the monastery as well. I must thank you, strangers. The Shadow Pan are in your debt. Now, there is much work to be done. It's a little more complicated than that, Kay. Basically, the idea here is that the ability to get back up from going to the dark exists, just like it did for Sylvanas. Thank you, Paladin. I am cleansed of all hatred. Know that you are a hero of the Shadow Pond. What do you need? You have defeated the Shah of Violence and saved the monastery. You have my respect. Perhaps we were wrong about your people, Velvoxus. White Tiger, watch over you. So if you've been paying attention to the story thus far, you've noticed that we've kind of been doing several things to save... Uh, Pandaria as we go through. Yes, we certainly have ruined a lot of things. I mean, Jade Forest, cough, cough. But we have actually net positive, we've been net positiving areas as we go through. Helping villages, helping towns, uh, fighting back against you know onslaughts they might have been, otherwise have been able to deal with. Basically defeating the Yongle and basically defeating the Mantid. In addition to, as I mentioned earlier, erasing the Prime Shaw. I like this moment here because this is the first moment that people from Pandara F Paria finally start to realize that we are on their side, that we are the protagonist, as we've already demonstrated back in the Valley of the Four Winds, and that we are here to try and help, and that we actually can do something long-term about this rather than just what they've been doing, which is kind of a stalling action for the last 10 millennia. 
Um, so what happened right now, again, this goes back to hatred being insidious, is the fact that hatred was in possession of Taran Zhu, but when hatred started to realize we were winning, in other words, when Taran Zhu was really low on health, hatred abandoned him and fled and said, oh, I'm out of here, because hatred didn't want to die. Hatred didn't want to be defeated here. That's one of the reasons why we'll be spending a decent chunk of the Town Long Steps chasing after hatred, because hatred wants to keep existing and keep influencing. He's one of the very few Shaw that shows that trait, the other one being fear. Uh, with that, we're actually basically done for the day. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and start off the Town Long Steps tomorrow. I need to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> I've never left this place without leaving group. I'm so sad. I guess I could just run now, maybe? There's no shortcut? Is there a shortcut? No? Hmm. Uh, right. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Tomorrow we will be hitting up the Town Long Steps. Hopefully I will not be going starting late again. Oh, and I want to answer Magister's question before I cut off, so... <clears throat> uh, oh, that's... That's easy, Magister. The reason that we do not see a uh, restored veil is the same reason we do not see a restored uh, outland. Which is the same reason we don't see several other things that have happened in lore that have been restored in lore. You know, we still see the effects of the cataclysm on several old zones. And in fact, only the fact that people are constantly complaining about it has restored chunks of Stormwind, for instance. Really, Deutsch? Anyways. So that, that, that's the main reason why they haven't done it, because they have not used layering to the full extent that they could to give us a modern version of older zones so we could see what they look like now. So, anyways, cutting it off. Hope to see you guys tomorrow in Alaska. There we go. Alaska, there we go. <laughs>